Hello everyone. In the last video we talked about texturing and shading and in this video we're going to do some basic animation to add some ambient motion to the scene that we're going to be doing. So what we're going to first do is work on animating these fans. So this is like a double fan setup and what we're going to do is we're going to group all of the fan blades here so that they're under one grouped node and then we'll be able to center the pivot. Okay, so let's go ahead and check if our pivot is working correctly. Let's do a little bit of a test rotation here. All right, so that seems like it'll work pretty well. So I'll go ahead and do the second fan again by doing the same thing, grouping all the fan blades under one node. Okay, so now I'm gonna set some keyframes here. I'm going to set the first keyframe at 1 and then the next keyframe now at frame 45 for a 360 degree rotation. So now the fans stop at frame 45, but what we can do is we can set a cycle so that they will continue to rotate uh, if we set the cycle beyond 45 frames. What I also want to do is set the keyframes to be linear so that they don't ease in or ease out. Otherwise, it kind of will slow down when it gets back to the beginning. Uh, so by setting it linear, we will have a continuous kind of motion that doesn't have any breaks in the motion. All right, so that's looking pretty good then for the fan spin. What I'm also going to do too, this gives me the option when we go to render that we don't have to render the full frame range. We only need to render the 45 frames. So then what we can do is take those frames into After Effects and then loop those 45 frames so that we get a longer animation and we don't have to render all those frames. We will have to select only certain areas of the frame to render by isolating the objects that are animated and that will give us a faster render time as well. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this fan with the keyframes preserved and move it down to where we duplicated it before, down by the door here. And then let's get it rotated and positioned over the top of the other one so that we can just delete the other one and keep this one with the animation that we have set up. I went ahead and animated all the other fans here. They all have the same 45 frame animation loop. Some of them go different ways to give a little bit of variation, but they all have a 45 frame uh, animation set to them so we can just render those. All right, the fans are looking good, so let's go ahead and move on to animating something else. Okay, so one of the other things I'm going to do is I want to animate the wires here so that they kind of blow a little bit in the wind so that they have like a little bit of ambient motion. So what we're going to do is we're going to add clusters and fall offs to all these wires here so that we can keyframe and animate them. There's other ways you could do this. You could add different kinds of gravity or uh, simulation effects and things like that. But since I just want very subtle movement, I'm just going to go ahead and do it by hand here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to deform and I'm going to make the whole wire have a cluster here. And so this will we'll be able to move the wire here with the cluster. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a fall off onto this deformer here. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a primitive fall off. And so then I'm going to move that primitive fall off into this area here. Okay. And so the nice thing about this is it has a fall off built into it. So we can scale this up 
so that we get a fall off towards the edges and we can use this we can use this deformer for all of the wires here that are in this area we'll probably need to create another one for those over there but this one can encompass all of these wires here so so now if we go ahead and move this cluster we can move it and it'll just deform in the area here and we're just going to have subtle movement it's just going to kind of blow a little bit in the wind here like this we can move it up and down and everything um i the nice thing too is you can adjust and scale the fall off there really easily so i can see how far i want the de deformer to go and how far and how far to fall off you can also even edit the fall off curve here so you've got different types of curves of interpolation that you can select here. So, all right, so let's go ahead and apply the deformation clusters to the rest of them. Okay. So then I just wanted to show here, we can assign the, uh, all the other clusters, we can assign them to the same primitive fall off. So we don't have to, add a new fall off primitive each time. So we can, we can use the same, the same primitive fall off here. So if I grab both of these handles, you can see they both have the same fall off and that works in this case, cause there's not, cause they're both ank these, all these wires are going to be anchored at the same spots. So, and of course there's different ways to do this, but I find this easier than having to go through each wire and either paint the cluster fall offs. It's nice to be able to reuse these. Actually, these are going to need a different one over here. So for these, I'm going to create a new primitive fall off one that's going to be moved back just a little bit here. So it's going to be closer to these wires here. Okay, that's working pretty good now. So now I'm gonna be sure all the clusters are zeroed out here. We can hide this other primitive. So now what we can go ahead and do is go ahead and animate these. We're, we can just set a few keyframes and then have it repeat throughout with maybe like a little bit of offset so it gives a little bit of variation. So. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that. I'm just going to do like subtle motion here. It's nice to be able to use these clusters here because they're easy to select and you can easily adjust the timing or the speed of them and things like that. So I like working with it this way, even though there's many other ways to do it. Okay, so now that we have everything kind of keyframed, let's go ahead and play this and see how it's all looking. And then we can make any more adjustments to the motion. Some of the keyframes I went back and reduced some of the translations just so that they don't move around too much or so that they are not too fast. But the motion's looking pretty good. It gives a nice subtle kind of ambient motion to everything. So I think we're pretty good with this. Okay, great. So now that we've animated the wires, we can move on in the next chapter. We're going to talk about lighting and rendering. We're going to start to add more neon light effects. And then we're also going to set up the animation there for what we're going to do in After Effects, doing more 2D animation with different signs flickering or different lights moving and things like that. Okay, we'll see you in the next chapter.